Today we're gonna take a look at the best settings to get your photos out of Lightroom Classic and onto Instagram. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now the first decision you need to make is are you posting this on Instagram as a story or as a feed post? If it's a feed post, there's a very limited number of aspect ratios that Instagram will accept. An aspect ratio is just the ratio of the width of the photo to the height of the photo. The range that Instagram deems appropriate or says is okay is somewhere between 1.91 to one, which is a horizontal aspect ratio, all the way to five by four, which is a vertical aspect ratio. If you're uploading an Instagram story, the chosen aspect ratio to maximize the space is nine to 16 vertically. So how do we set this? Well, the easiest thing to do is to pop into Lightroom Classic, go into the develop module by hitting the letter D on the keyboard, and then choosing the crop tool up here in the toolbar. Now, once you've chosen the crop tool, there is a selection of aspect ratios over here on the right. And you'll notice that some, but not all of them are already here for us to use. If we're talking stories, you'll notice that Lightroom right off the bat gives us a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Now, by default, this might come into your image as a horizontal 16 by nine, meaning as soon as you select that, you might see a horizontal crop on your photo. Well, Instagram stories want a vertical crop. So what you can do is simply hit the letter X on the keyboard and that will flip flop your crop between nine by 16 and 16 by nine. So that's a great way to get your story cropped. Again, if you're looking for a photo to fill an Instagram story, that's the best aspect ratio. For a feed post though, we need to be between 1.91 to one and four to five. So this you might have to set up some custom aspects within the program. The easiest way to do that is to click this drop down right here, come down to enter custom, and you can simply type the two aspect ratios that you're looking for or make whatever new aspect ratio you want. You can see I have 1.91 to one, and that is a horizontal orientation. So I can hit the letter X to flip it. This is as horizontal, or you could think of as panoramic as Instagram will allow a horizontal photo to be uploaded. You can upload a more panoramic photo than this, but Instagram is gonna crop it automatically to fit this aspect right here. And I'd highly recommend that if you're a photographer, you take the time to crop your own images versus letting Instagram do it for you. On the other hand, if you wanna upload the most vertical photo possible into a feed post, what we're gonna use is four to five. Now there already is one set up for four by five slash eight by 10. Make sure that you flip this with the X key if you need to, to see the vertical four by five or five by four orientation. Also, I should say any intermediary aspect ratio between those two is also acceptable. So if you just want something really easy, just remember one to one. Square photos are always acceptable on Instagram's feed and they work great as well. Either way, I highly recommend making sure that your image is cropped properly before moving on to the next step. Because once we get into the export dialog box, there's no way to adjust the crop easily. So crop first, then export. In this case, I'm gonna export as the most horizontal I can. So I'm gonna to go to the 1.91 to one and I'm just gonna maximize my available photo space. Something like that. Now that we have the image cropped, we can go ahead and go into the export dialog box. The easiest way to do that is tap the letter G on the keyboard to get to our grid of images. And then in the lower left-hand corner, you should have the export button. Go ahead and click on that. Now Instagram makes this pretty easy and there are some little tweaks and tricks we can do in here, but basically this is just how we would normally export a photo for almost anything else with a couple of small exceptions. The first thing we wanna do when exporting is set where we want the photo to go. And I think there's a little bit of confusion out there about exporting for beginning Lightroom users. Exporting always by definition makes a copy of your original photo living wherever it lives it applies the edits that you've made to that copy and it sends that copy somewhere. And the reason I go into this is when you export a photo out of Lightroom, you always can do what you're gonna do with that exported file, upload it to Instagram, do whatever you're gonna do, and then you can always delete that export. If you ever need it again, say like down the road, you're like, oh man, I wish I hadn't deleted that exported photo that I uploaded to Instagram, I need to give it to somebody else. You can always re-export out of Lightroom. So I do not keep my exports. I export the photo, I do what I'm gonna do with it, and then I delete that exported version as soon as it's served its purpose. For that reason, what I prefer to do is send all of my exported photos to the desktop, because if it's on the desktop, I know I can pretty easily delete it. Anything on my desktop, once it's served its purpose, I can get rid of it. So up here at the top where it says export location, I'm gonna choose desktop. 
Now you can also choose here to put it in a subfolder. I'm only exporting one photo here, but I could select 10 photos at a time and export them all together. If you're selecting more than one, I would highly recommend putting them in a subfolder. Just call it something like for Instagram or similar. If you're only exporting one photo, and as I am in this case, I'm gonna uncheck that. I just want that photo loosely tossed on the desktop. The next section is file renaming. And personally, in this instance, I'm not gonna rename my file. If I was exporting files for say a client, I might choose to rename them with my business name or whatever the client has asked of me. But for Instagram, it doesn't really matter. So I'm actually gonna collapse the file naming section and I'm gonna be sure that rename to is unchecked. We can also skip over video and we can come down to file settings and image sizing. And this is where the magic really happens. Now, Instagram requires that we upload JPEG photographs. So let's choose an image format of JPEG. Let's also maximize the quality at 100. You could think of quality like compression or smoothing. We want the maximum quality out of our photo. And then for color space, let's choose sRGB. Do note that if you choose a different color space, Instagram will still accept the photo, but the colors that you see on the photo once you've uploaded it will vary greatly from the colors that you see in Lightroom. And it's one of those things where the more we can let Lightroom handle as far as changing colors, resizing, things like that, Lightroom's resizing algorithm, as an example, is way better than Instagram's resizing algorithm. So if we can use Lightroom to do the resizing, the color remapping, all of that kind of stuff, we're gonna end up with a better result than just feeding any old thing into Instagram and letting its algorithm and kind of mathematics take control of your photograph. So now that we have JPEG and sRGB selected, we're gonna make sure limit file size is unchecked and that is the end of the file settings box. Next, we come down to image sizing. Now, this is one of the most important ones. We wanna be sure we get this right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to resize to fit and we're gonna turn this on. Once this is turned on, we're gonna change it to width and height and we are going to select a width of 1080 pixels. This is what Instagram requires, is that the width of every photo, whether it's vertical, horizontal, whatever, is 1080 pixels. Now, assuming you have cropped it to an acceptable aspect ratio, the height can be whatever it needs to be. We don't want Lightroom to constrain the height. We only want Lightroom to constrain the width. So what I usually do is choose a nice small width and then for the height, I pick something really, really high, like say 5,000 pixels. This doesn't mean that Instagram or Lightroom in this case is going to crop your photo to be 1,080 pixels wide by 5,000 pixels high. These are maximum constraints. So in this case, it's going to crop the width to 1080 and it's gonna allow the height to be whatever the height needs to be. Again, Instagram doesn't care what the height is so long as it's an acceptable aspect ratio and that the width is exactly equal to 1,080 pixels. And I say exactly equal there, but again, you could upload a larger photo to Instagram and let Instagram do the resizing, but Lightroom's gonna do a better job, so let's let Lightroom do as much of that work as it can. Now that we have that selected width of 1080, height of 5,000 pixels, let's leave don't enlarge checked and we can leave the resolution at 72. Truthfully, resolution doesn't really matter anymore for screen-based display. If yours says 300, that's fine. If it says 360, that's fine. If it says 1000, that's fine. Resolution really only comes into play when we are printing our photographs, um, and even then, less and less as time goes on. But in this case, if you wanna feel like, oh, mine's like forests, go ahead and type in 72 in your resolution box, and that should work perfectly. All right, next thing is output sharpening. I recommend doing a sharpen for screen with a low amount. Now, this is a very important one. Instagram sometimes does a little bit of sharpening of its own. Facebook does too. A lot of different algorithms will sharpen your photos for you. So if you choose sharpening of low, you upload the photo to Instagram and you look at it and it looks crunchy, it looks over sharpened. Just uncheck this and export again and re-upload and test it. I also know some people prefer to do output sharpening of medium for screen because they like their photos being a little bit crispier. It almost depends on what genre you shoot, different things like that. So I would experiment with the sharpen settings to find the one that works the best for you. In this case, I'm gonna do sharpen for screen with a low amount. 
Lastly, metadata here, I'm gonna say copyright only. I don't want the uh, location information or that stuff to get added to Instagram. If I do wanna add that information, I will do it manually using Instagram itself when I'm uploading the photo. I don't wanna turn on any sort of watermarking and I don't want any post processing. So I'm actually gonna collapse those three sections because they don't matter too much. In fact, I usually collapse output sharpening as well. So long story short, it really comes down to three things. Where do you want the photo to go? What type of file do you want? And how big do you want that file to be? And together, those three settings allow us to specify to, to Lightroom exactly how we want our files to be exported. Now, before we call this a day, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Add button down here in the lower left-hand corner, and I'm going to save this as a new preset so that I can use this again and again and again every time I need to export for Instagram. I'm gonna give it a very simple name for Instagram. We're gonna go ahead and hit Create. And it will live down here in my User Presets section, just like that. So if my settings ever go crazy, I can go down to that preset, click it again, and it will change all of my settings back to what we set up today, and we'll have the perfect settings for Instagram. And as soon as that's done on my desktop, if I hide Lightroom here, we have my photo properly sized for Instagram. And just to verify, what I can do is right click on it on a Mac, and I can go to Get Info. PC folks, you would right click and go to Properties. And under Get Info, I can come down here and I can look at the file info and I can see that the dimensions are 1080 wide, which is what we wanted, by 565 high, which again is that maximum horizontal, the, the most horizontal photo that we're allowed to upload to Instagram. If it was square, you'd see 1080 by 1080, and if it was vertical, you'd see 1080 by whatever, five times 1080 divided, but whatever, do the math, you'd have a vertical version of this photo. Point is, it's always 1080 wide. From there, upload to Instagram, airdrop it to your phone, email it to yourself, text it to yourself, however you wanna do it. Upload it to Instagram and you are good to go. The only thing you should need to tweak is the sharpening settings. If things look a little bit too crunchy and over sharpened, just drop down that output sharpening to off or increase it if you want a little bit of extra crispiness out of your photos. Uh, I know that it seems kind of complicated when you first get into exporting, but really it's a very straightforward process. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, definitely hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. Drop a comment down below if you have any sort of questions. And also in the description down below, I'm gonna put a link to our full length exporting guide. I think it's like 40 minutes long. It's a, it's a Lightroom tutorial that walks through exporting from start to finish. It talks about all the different file sizes and image types and all those things. So if you are not one to just know a quick uh, button for exporting, you wanna know all about it, definitely check out the video down there. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. I hope to see you in another one. Thanks everybody.